what's happening everyone? In the last three videos in this series we covered the most basic of the popular sorting algorithms, bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. In this video we'll introduce merge sort, an algorithm that trades away the constant space complexity of the prior three, in favor of generally faster run times and scalability. In the beginning of this video we'll cover the basics and underlying methodology of the merge sort, and later we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement the algorithm using the Python coding language. Don't worry if you don't have much experience with Python, as it's definitely one of the most readable coding languages, and the logic from our Python code should carry over directly to an implementation in pretty much any other coding language. After implementing the merge sort, we'll run some tests to benchmark its runtime performance against the three sorting techniques we've covered in the prior lessons. As always, if you enjoy the video, or find it interesting or informative, consider throwing me a thumbs up. Also take some time to check out the rest of the content on my channel, and if it fits your taste, think about subscribing so you can be notified when I upload new coding tutorials. So to start things off, similar to the last three videos, we'll first take a look at an animation of the merge sort in action to help us synthesize some of its higher level features. The first thing to notice is that we begin the procedure by repeatedly breaking the array down into smaller and smaller chunks. For an input array of length n, this process continues until we have n arrays, each containing a single item. Once we completely break up the array, we enter the second phase of the merge sort where we begin to reconstruct each segment of the array. The key to the merge sort algorithm is that when we begin the reconstruction, we don't just put the elements back in their original order, Instead, we insert the elements in their appropriate sorted order. The conceptual idea behind merge sort is essentially that it's faster to merge two sorted halves of an array than to sort the full array in place. This is the divide and conquer underpinning to merge sort that provides it with competitive performance. The last thing to notice is that we clearly don't perform all operations in place, that is, in the original input array. In our implementation, we'll use recursion, so we'll have to maintain a call stack in memory, making our memory consumption larger than what we experienced in the prior three sorting algorithms. Normally we'd now cover the pseudocode for the sorting algorithm, but merge sort is actually relatively straightforward, so we'll skip that section and instead just explain more in depth while we're actually implementing it in Python. As we can see on this slide, the time complexity for the merge sort algorithm is big O of n log n in all cases. I'll put a link in the description to a great explanation on this, but conceptually this is because you must iterate over every element in the input approximately log n times, giving us n times log n. If you recall that we have two phases, the dividing phase and the recombination phase, you can remember it as the divide operation taking log n steps and the recombination or merging taking n steps. Take note that a smaller big O value does not necessarily mean a faster runtime. It's simply a metric on how quickly the runtime will grow as a result of a growth in the input size. Despite this, I'm predicting we'll still see far better performance from the merge sort when compared to our prior three sorting techniques, all of which suffered from exponential time complexity. The space complexity for the merge sort is big O of n. This comes from the fact that our first step is to break the n length array into n separate arrays of length 1. There is also log n space that must be allocated on the call stack to accommodate our recursive function calls, but this is negligible when compared to n. We'll now move over to a coding editor and actually implement merge sort using Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, the first thing we'll be doing is carrying over our create array function from the prior three videos. This function will be used to generate randomized arrays we can use to ensure our sorting technique is actually returning sorted arrays. The method is passed a size parameter to signify the length of the new array, as well as a second parameter, max, to mark the upper bound on the range each element of the array is randomly selected from. For example, if our max input was 10, each element would be randomly selected from the range 0 up to 10. We'll now write some code to print out one of the randomized arrays to ensure it's working properly. As we can see, we have an array of length 10 filled with random elements, so the function is working great. When implementing merge sort, we normally break the algorithm into two separate functions. The first is the actual merge sort function, and the second, we'll call merge, is used to merge two sorted arrays into a single sorted array. The merge is essentially a helper function for the overall merge sort algorithm, and as such could either be placed as a standalone function or written inside the merge sort method itself. In our case, we'll implement it as a standalone function. The function as we said earlier, we'll be passed two sorted arrays, A and B. The logic of the merge function will be identical to what we can see in the GIF on the bottom right. We'll look at the smallest end of both A and B, and just keep taking off the smaller of the two elements until one of the arrays is empty. This will be accomplished in code by first creating a new list, C. This will be the merge list we'll return at the end. We'll then create variables to hold the current indices we're looking at for the A and B arrays called A index and B index. Initially, these will be set to zero because the smallest ends of both lists will be at the beginning, since they're both in sorted order. We'll then enter into a while loop where we continue iterating until we've used up all the elements in one of the input arrays. On each iteration, we compare the elements seen at the top of each array 
and append whichever is smaller onto our merged array C. After which, we also increment the index for the array we pulled from to prevent writing the same element onto the merge list again. At the end of the while loop, we extend the merge list with whichever of the two input arrays wasn't completely used up inside the while loop. For example, if after the while loop the A index variable is equal to the length of the input array A, we know we already pushed all the elements of A onto C. And if this is the case, there must also be at least one element left in B, so we push the remaining elements of B directly onto the end of C. At the end of the function, as we said earlier, we simply return our newly created merged array C. We'll now create an example test case with two short sorted arrays and ensure the merge function is able to weave them together correctly. After running the script, we can see we've correctly merged the two sorted inputs into a single sorted array. We now have everything set up to allow us to write the actual merge sort function. The function will be passed a single input array, A. Inside the function, we'll first perform a check to see if the length of our input is 0 or 1. If so, by definition, the array is already sorted, so we'll just return the input. We'll now create two new variables named left and right and set them equal to the return values of two separate recursive calls to the merge sort function. The left variable will be equal to the return value of the merge sort function when past the first half of the input array, and the right variable will be equal to the return value when past the second half of the array. On the third and final line of our function, we'll merge the left and right segments using our helper function and return this new array. It's pretty amazing, in my opinion at least, that the entire merge sort function can be written in three lines of Python code. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we'll write a test case to ensure the function is actually working. We'll create a new array using the create array function, then print it to terminal. We'll then call merge sort and print out the result. Hopefully we should see that the array has been returned in sorted order. As you can see, we've successfully sorted the randomized array. The only thing left to do is benchmark the merge sort algorithm against the three prior sorting algorithms we've covered, bubble, selection, and insertion sort. We'll just be pasting in the code for these three functions, so check out the prior videos if you'd like more information. We'll be benchmarking the sorting algorithms on randomized inputs of length 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. For each size, we'll create randomized arrays for each sorting algorithm and record the amount of time taken by each to sort the array. Since we're using different arrays for each algorithm, there may be some slight deviations from the norm. For example, if one of the sorting algorithms gets a partially sorted array as its input. But for our purposes, the result should be just fine. At the end, we'll print out the results in a table format. Note that the B character at the beginning of the table header should actually have been an N to signify the input size. We'll now switch over to terminal and run the benchmark. As we can see, our merge sort algorithm is significantly faster for larger input array sizes, though for the smaller sizes we see a much closer competition. At an input array size of 10, insertion sort is actually faster than merge sort, and at length 100, selection sort is the fastest. But because bubble, insertion, and selection sort all suffer from exponential time complexity in the worst case, these techniques begin to slow down substantially as the input array size increases. We're not recording the memory consumption of each algorithm, so these comparisons may not be completely fair, though they should still give you a good idea of what you'd be best off with using in a coding project. That takes us to the end of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and can now implement merge sort in Python with at least some confidence. Be sure to stay tuned to my upcoming video covering quick sort, and after I get all these sorting techniques out of the way, I'll probably do some videos on some of my recent projects. So hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing some of those. I'll see you guys next time.